Blessed be the tie that binds our hearts in Christian love. The
Good morning. It is good to have everyone here, especially Benjamin and Sue. It's good to have you two here. But the rest of you, you guests, it's good to have all of you. Thank you for joining us for this very special occasion. We've waited a while, we've planned a while, we've uh, anticipated a while, and now it's finally here. I'm convinced that the happiest marriages are not the people who naively believe that they're going to live happily ever after but rather those who acknowledge there is an end coming and therefore give thanks to God every single day that they have together. Give thanks. That's the right response. Ephesians 5.20 says, Giving thanks always for all things. Proverbs 5.18 says, Rejoice with the wife of your youth. Five weeks ago, we had another wedding in this building. Afterward, we went and had the reception right across the, the hall here, and there was a time of open testimony. And a young man got up toward the end of that open, open mic time, and he told the couple this advice. He said, treasure every day as if it's your last. Treasure every day as if it's your last. Now, he knew what he was talking about. He got married, and his wife passed away nine months later. 
Be thankful for every single day. Keep God number one, put your wife second, and yourself last. And Sue, put God number one, your husband second, and yourself last. And you will be very, very wealthy. You will be very, very rich. And no matter what God brings your way, give thanks to God for every single gift that he gives you. It will draw you closer together, each other, as a couple. But more importantly, it's going to draw you closer to God who gave you this gift. I have some words for you. And they're not my words. They're the words of God. Also, as I have looked back over my 17,000 days of marriage, I've learned a few things that this works. <clears throat> Three things. Be ye kind to each other. Tender hearted. That means caring about the other one and their feelings, how they feel. And forgiving. Kind, tender hearted, and forgiving. But there's another motivation. The motivation that motivates you to do that is also doing this because God, for Christ's sake, hath done this for you. We're doing this for God. Okay, bridal party may come forward. You may join your hands. Benjamin, do you, in the presence of God and these witnesses, take Susanna to be your wife? Will you love and cherish her, provide and care for her in health and in sickness, in prosperity? and in adversity. Share with her the joys and sorrows of life. Exercise patience, kindness, forbearance toward her. Live with her in peace, as becometh a faithful Christian husband, forsaking all others, keeping yourself only unto her as long as you both shall live. I do. Susanna, do you, in the presence of God and these witnesses, take Benjamin to be your wedded husband? Will you love and cherish him, provide for him in health and in sickness, in prosperity and in adversity, share with him the joys and sorrows of life, exercise patience, kindness, and forbearance toward him, Live with him in peace as becometh a faithful Christian wife, forsaking all others, keeping yourself only unto him as long as you both shall live. I do. God is heard. As your hands have been joined together, may it also be a symbol of unity of heart always working together for the cause of the Lord in your marriage. What therefore God hath joined together, let not man put asunder. The parents of the bride and groom may come forward.
It's my privilege to introduce to you Mr. and Mrs. Benjamin Gussie. Side by side, 
until our journey's done. There's all things now living, a song of thanksgiving to God, the Creator, triumphantly raised, who fashioned and made us protected and stayed.
down, dries each tear, hold my hand when I can stand on my own. Faithful love from above came to earth to show the Father's love, and I'll Joy.